This is the Ricoh GR3X, a tiny 24 megapixel camera with a 40 millimeter lens that easily fits in your pocket. Ricoh GR cameras are highly regarded amongst the street photography community as one of the best pocket sized cameras. Most of you who watch this channel know that I'm a Fujifilm shooter, the X100V and the X-E4 are my go-to street photography cameras and that's not changing anytime soon. But I wanted to see what the hype was about and offer my first impressions on this little pocket camera. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I think the main selling point of the GR series are their size. They fit in this niche market of fixed lens pocket size cameras, cameras with a specific purpose, that purpose being able to fit in your pocket. A lot of people instinctively might want to compare this camera to the X100V, and it will be hard for me to not make those comparisons in this video because that's the camera I have the most experience with, but I just want to make this point clear. I personally don't think they are a fair comparison because they're designed completely different for different purposes. The Ricoh GR3X is designed to be a pocket camera. That's why it lacks a viewfinder and is half the size of the X100V. The X100V, on the other hand, is not designed to be a pocket camera. I mean, I guess you can make it work. You'll just have a lot of explaining to do. It's really designed to feel like your traditional film camera. That's why it has an optical viewfinder and all of these analog controls. Now that being said, they are both designed to be small, compact, fixed lens cameras. So I guess you could sort of see where that urge to compare the two come from. I think as long as you acknowledge that the Ricoh GR isn't going to have many features of the X100V and you're making the compromise for that ability to fit the camera in your pocket. Like I can carry these two cameras easily wherever I go. It's not that big of a deal, but there's something about being able to slip your camera into your pocket that takes portability to this whole new level. I talked about the iPhone and using it for street photography in my latest video. And for a lot of people, the phone camera is their most used camera for, you know, everyday moments because it's just so convenient. It's always in your pocket. With a camera this size, that's pretty comparable to a phone, it makes it almost inexcusable to not bring it with you wherever you go. I mentioned before that this fits in a niche camera market and it's a pretty expensive price point for what it is. There's also many other cheaper options out there and I'm eager to see how they compare. But depending on how you look at it, that convenience of being able to carry a camera in your pocket, that's really what you're paying for and I guess you could say is worth the money because that convenience, that portability, it could be the difference between taking photos and not taking them because your camera was too big and you left it at home. People say that the Ricoh GR is meant to be this one-handed operated camera. In most cases, it does work one-handed, but only if you really shoot in fully auto, which is actually what I did most of the time. I set the camera to P mode, but if you want to access the other function buttons, uh, it was a little hard because the camera is almost a little too small. There were moments when I tried to use the other function buttons with my thumb and I could feel my fingers slipping across the front grip. Like if I didn't have this hand strap, uh, I'd be scared of actually dropping this camera. So, you know, here and there, my left hand came to the rescue and I stabilized the camera. When you make a camera that's this small, you have to make some compromises and one of those is ergonomics. The 40 millimeter lens on the GR3X is the only real difference between its GR3 counterpart, which has a 28 millimeter lens. You know, depending on how you shoot, the 40 millimeter might be the better option for you. Um, if you're more of a run and gun style, you know, zone focusing, um, one of the great features of this camera is snap focus. I would say the 28 millimeter is probably the better option. But if you're someone that likes to, you know, move a little bit slower, maybe focus on the finer details of a scene, the 40 millimeter might be the better option. 
I personally love the 35 millimeter focal length. I think that's the most versatile focal length out there. Um, and you know, if you're choosing between the two, the 28 millimeter or the 40 millimeter, you're gonna feel more closer to home with the 40 millimeter. Now, how does the 40 millimeter actually work for a pocket camera? Something that's meant to document every part of your life. And honestly, I think you're inevitably going to run into a situation where the 40 millimeter doesn't work well. That's just the case with any focal length. There's no perfect focal length for every single scenario. Now that said, I think the times where you wish you had the 28 millimeter lens, that's gonna happen far less often than you wishing you had the 40 millimeter. You know, maybe in situations where you're in a confined space, it's hard to move back where you are. Those are times where you would wish you had a wider lens, but I think for the daily documentation, the 40 millimeter is gonna be much more flattering for portraits and just for that daily documentation. When it comes to street photography though, I think it really comes down to your personal preference and the style and approach that you take. Uh, so you're gonna have to make that decision on your own. I knew going into this that the Ricoh GR3 did not have great battery life. I think it's 200 or so shots per battery uh, without turning it off. Um, I did get used to turning it on and off all the time. Um, and I didn't really have an issue with that. Uh, the, the camera turns on really quickly. For pretty much every camera I own, I always carry more than one battery when I go out. And these camera batteries are so small that it's really not a big issue for me, but I still think it's worthy to mention because I don't think you can really get away with one battery with this camera. You're going to need to invest in one or even two if you're trying to shoot with this you know, for most of a day. Now I didn't really mind not having a viewfinder on this camera because I kind of understand that defeats the purpose of the GR, but I do wish that there was a tilt screen on the camera because this is a camera that you can only use with the LCD screen. I use the tilt screen on my X100V and my XE4 all of the time. It lets me have an easier time composing my shots um, and it comes in handy when I'm shooting in bright sunny days, which on the GR was a little difficult to do because I would get you know sun glaring off the side of the, the LCD screen. A tilt screen would let me change the angle of what I was looking at on the screen without actually changing the angle at which my camera was pointing. The original GR3 had a 28 millimeter lens. And for that focal length, I don't think a tilt screen is really all that necessary. You know, with a 28 millimeter lens, you don't have to be that precise with your composition. You know, you have so much space to work with, you can crop in a little bit. But with a 40 millimeter focal length, it's sort of a big deal. So those are just my first impressions of this camera. I plan on using this a lot more in my upcoming trip to Istanbul, Turkey. I guess you could consider this my public announcement. Um, it's gonna be super fun. Roman, Aaron, and a bunch of other photographers you might know uh, will be going there as well. Expect a lot of videos, both with this camera and other cameras. With that said, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Uh, if any of you have more specific uh, questions related to the GR3X, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. Last but not least, thank you to my friends over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I've been using Squarespace for over five years now. From easy to use templates and e-commerce controls at your fingertips, my Squarespace site is a one-stop shop for everything related to my photography and my business. Something I'm starting to incorporate on my website are written versions of my videos. Squarespace makes it really easy to write and edit within the platform itself. So if any of you are interested in seeing a written version of my videos, definitely check it out. Potential clients always look online for portfolios. So if you've been running with an Instagram page all of this time, consider setting up a Squarespace site and make a professional looking website in minutes. Visit squarespace.com slash Faisal to start a free trial and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.